Let's talk about the new Cutting Edge Premium Warbond today. I wanted to answer the question, is it worth making this purchase? First, let's get into the Sickle Primary. This is a laser weapon that has infinite ammo and a cooldown between use, so you can have unlimited ammo with this bad boy as long as you make sure to keep that heat meter in check. It doesn't have any different firing modes, only zoom adjustments. And I also wouldn't advise bringing us on a hot planet as it overheats kind of quickly as it is, and so adding more to that would be kind of devastating. You can have up to six coils in this, but you shouldn't usually need those. It is nice for situations when you need to push it a bit to get out of a situation, but most times you won't have to reload, so that's nice. This will not penetrate armor other than light armor. This one seems to mostly stick true to its description at least for that part. I will say that this can clear a horde pretty decently on bugs, and you can pop the tops off of automatons with almost pinpoint accuracy as well. To be honest, as far as crowd control, I think this comes decently close to the breaker due to the unlimited ammo perk of being a laser weapon. I think this is the best weapon to come out of this pack so far, and one you may actually end up using in your arsenal, unlike many of the other automatic choices. So, if you're keen on a pretty cool laser weapon that performs slightly under the breaker shotgun, at least in crowd control, and never has to reload with managed heat levels, then this would be the gun for you. Next up, the Punisher Plasma variant. This is less a shotgun and more of a mini plasma mortar. It has a massive drop-off, making each shot arc moments after being fired. It's okay at best. It won't make any parts of a mission easier, and it can do okay in crowds, as long as you can arc it right, but having to adjust for the bullet drop mid-combat just to maybe hit a few mobs and not even take them out most times is not really worth it for me. One unique thing about plasma weapons is that they seem to get a bigger explosion radius the farther away it's fired, so it could be used as a faraway type mortar for an area with kind of an okay effectiveness, but there are plenty of other things that would do that and better, so for this weapon specifically I really don't understand what they were trying to go with here. This cannot take out bug holes or outposts, so it's not going to be useful for those for my testing. This comes with 8 bullets per mag and a total of 12 mags available at max, and this one is pretty underwhelming, and I honestly can't see anyone really bringing this with many other weapons and stratagems taking its place and doing it far better than this can. So for this one specifically, I'd say it's probably not worth it. This next one is basically a light version of the arc thrower without being a support weapon. This is the arc 12 blitzer shotgun. Honestly, it does better crowd control than the last weapon, and it's got a pretty decent ability to spread when used from a distance. So you can hit multiple targets with it quite well. This has infinite ammo as well, but with a cooldown in between each shot rather than overheat mechanic or a charge up mechanic like the arc thrower, so it's unique in that way. You can't change anything on this weapon, it also doesn't come with a flashlight either, so not much to customize here overall. This does decently well on smaller bugs and can actually take out 3-4 to four at a time with a decent distance from them, but usually if you are close, the arc spread is mainly going to focus on the closest target to you, and it can do decent damage, but most of the bigger trash mobs will take you multiple shots, and with a few seconds in between each shot, it's going to be a bit hard to justify bringing this one in because of that. I tried this on automatons as well, and I would highly advise against it. It's really not good there, as they require more precision than this weapon is going to offer you, and you can do much better with a weapon that is actually going to allow precision to hit that head, as it's going to be a massive gamble on whether or not it actually takes the head out, especially when you are diving and dodging away from a hailstorm of gunfire. I think this weapon could be better with a faster shot time to get some more damage out, just a bit faster, which could definitely elevate it. I was actually pretty excited for this one, but ultimately, I won't be using this personally, as it just doesn't perform in a way that works for my playstyle. This may work for you, but I felt like this wasn't really for me. I am really disappointed on this one, the Laze 7 Dagger. This is somehow worse than the Scythe, so if you didn't like that weapon, then it's likely that you won't like this one. It takes abysmally long to take anything down with this thing. It won't do any armor penetration above light like most things. It even fails at taking down the one enemy that has a weakness to precision, which is what this thing is going to be best at. It overheats insanely fast and isn't worth using in my opinion. I would suggest pretty much any other weapon over this. I am sure there are some out there that may find this useful, but to me it doesn't hit any harder than a squirt gun, and you will most likely overheat the gun before you actually take out your intended target. So this one is definitely not worth the price tag to me so far, and honestly, I think most people will feel pretty much the same about this one. Now that we have covered all the weapons, let's talk about the new grenade. The G23 Stun Grenade. This is one of the things I was most hopeful for within this pack, and I absolutely delivered. It will stun crowds incredibly well, and you can also cook this in your hand and let it explode to stun everything in a small radius around you. You will also get slowed by this, but you can dive out of those annoying hunters with relative ease when doing so. This also stuns almost every elite enemy in the game. It can stop chargers dead in their tracks, this can interrupt bile titans and daze them for a few moments, and even stop hulks. 
The one thing this will not stop is tanks, which makes complete sense. But that is the one elite enemy that you cannot stop with these. I really enjoy this grenade. There is one small thing about it that most won't enjoy though, and that is that it doesn't act as an explosive. So that means no bug holes or no outposts. And that also means you can't open the random caches around the map either. So if you're fine with that downside, then I would seriously recommend this. These give you a breath of fresh air against things like hunters and stalkers, as well as chargers when they just won't stop pestering you. I think this is probably my favorite item to come out of the new Warbond, and I cannot recommend it enough. The next item that you can get from this pack that is not a weapon is the Localization Confusion Booster. I am not 100% the full effects of this, but the description reads that it increases the time in between enemy encounters. From what I have been able to gather, this means that enemies can't call in reinforcements as often. This doesn't seem to target any enemy in particular, just overall once a reinforcement is called, it takes a longer time for the enemy to do so again. I was playing with this in all the footage and all my recent gameplay, and it did seem to make a small difference. I did most of this on difficulty 7, but tried it on Helldive as well, and it wasn't the biggest difference, but it did feel like there was less enemies overwhelming on the screen when being alerted. So as far as the exact percentage or time that this provides, I couldn't say, as it doesn't exactly state that anywhere. There will need to be some more testing for this overall to try to pinpoint exactly what this can do for you, but I feel like with this booster it can definitely be a boon, but there's some more testing that needs to be done here. The last major thing you can get from this pack is going to be the armor. Now all of this armor is going to share the exact same buff. The only difference is going to be the looks and that one is light armor instead of medium armor. The benefit is that it provides 95% arc damage resistance, which is actually a lot. The only issue is that it isn't really going to be the best perk as you want to avoid getting hit with arc damage in the first place, so trying to prevent something that shouldn't really be happening in the first place kind of seems a bit hard to justify for me personally. You may be able to arc off of your friends using this armor and the arc thrower, but I don't feel like this is going to be a game changer and unless you like the fashion, it seems that the other perks of the current armor selection is going to provide more benefits. So unless you just really like the way this looks or you really want to arc off of your friends using some sort of arc gun, then this probably won't give you much benefit. To give you my honest opinion on this pack, I would say to avoid paying real money for it. There's no rush to get most of this stuff. It's really not going to make or break your experience here, and the three best things out of this is the Sickle, Stun Grenade, and the new Booster, at least in my opinion. All of which, again, aren't going to make this game easy mode by any means. So overall, I do like this theme, and it's a pretty cool idea for most of these weapons, but I don't feel like most of these added much benefit to the already eh armory that we currently have presented to us. This is definitely a great step in a direction for adding a more diverse set of things that we will see in the battlefield, but with this pack, I have a feeling that most of the packs will follow this idea that we see in the future and going to come with a few highlights and a few duds. So enjoy the game and get things at your own pace. If you feel like paying for it, great. Or if you already have enough super credits to get this, then that's perfect as well. As far as that goes, I wouldn't recommend rushing to get this by any means. I hope this was able to help you in some way overall. And thank you so much for watching this video. Go out there and spread some democracy with your favorite gear.